What's up, guys? It's Doll Matter here, and today we're gonna to be reacting to "Modern Women Demand." What modern women demand traditional men, but by just pearly things. So this is something we've talked about a little bit before in this channel. Uh, you always see a lot of these like club thought type girls asking for traditional men, but they don't want to be traditional women, and they don't realize that like the type of guys that they're after aren't going for club thoughts. Uh, so. As always, link to the original video is down below. Remember to like, comment, subscribe to help the algorithm, and let's get into it. Speaker in 2022. 100%. Yes. In what oh, yeah, 100%. Like, I mean, I guess it depends on what you mean. Are you talking physically or mentally? Physically, yeah, if we're talking, like, average dude, the average dude is much weaker now than they were 100 years ago, 200 years ago. Um, we can see this with testosterone levels, right? Testosterone levels are, like, half to a quarter on average what they were 100 or 200 years ago. Now, if you're talking about, like, the strongest men in the world, they're much stronger now than they were 100, 200 years ago. Part of this is to do with steroids, um, you know, access to, like, much better drugs, much better nutritional programs, much better training uh, regiments. Um, and then also, just on top of that, like, the population, right? If you're talking, like, 100, 200 years ago, you're talking about 500 million, maybe less people. So if you're the strongest man in the world 500 or uh, 100 years ago, you're 1 in 500 million. If you're the strongest man in the world now, you're 1 in 8 billion, Right. So this is why you see guys just crushing all these records nowadays, whether it be in like shot put or discus or any of these strongman competitions or powerlifting. It's a combination of those factors, right? One is the population so much larger that you're going to have a large population pool to pull from. And then two, better training, better steroids, all of that stuff, right? So the, so the strongest men in the world are much stronger today than they, are, than they were before, but the average is much weaker. Now, if you're talking about like mentally... Um, again, I think it, you, that, yeah, definitely on average. The, the, again, there's going to be exceptions, but on average, yeah. Uh, I think there's something still playing, bless me. Oh, there, it's off. Okay, okay. From, from what I think, I'm going to compare the men I see now to what my dad was. Mm. Now, my dad took it overboard. He was, he was over, like, masculine, over... Uh, misogynist, if that's the word. <laughs> How she associates those as the same thing, being masculine and being misogynistic. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, there probably is some overlap, but... Um, whereas now... I'll talk about the physical side, but this is not the important side, I'm just saying. Like, now, I'm a dancer. I've been a dancer for a few years. Now I see dancers putting on uh, like makeup mm -hmm. and just not nothing, nothing wrong with that absolutely nothing wrong with that but it's it's a feminine trait right so it, it also comes into like the personality side where the men I see now are not as tough as probably my dad was he was he was he was proper like I run the house I don't cook the woman mm -hmm. cooks um, uh, this is my role. This is the woman's role. Whereas now it's all it's all very mixed. Um, so I'm, I'm just curious, why is that misogynist? You, you said misogynistic. So I mean, yeah, like that right there. That's I live in a very conservative area. That's how most people still live their lives. Uh, you have a lot, like where I live, you have a lot of stay-at-home wives, a lot of stay-at-home moms, uh, and then the husband earns most of the money. The, you know, the wife does like the house cleaning and the cooking and all that stuff. Um, but then again, I live in a very rural, conservative area. But, I mean, in the, in the city, you see this all the time. Like, on, like, I see it on TikTok, I see it on Twitter. This trend of, like, house husbands. And then the wife goes out and earns all the money. And what I find funny about this is uh, there was a guy on Chris Williamson's podcast. Uh, I can't remember the name of his podcast. But, anyway, there was a guy on that podcast who was talking about, like, w what we've seen as you've had the increase in that is women so women typically they tend to engage in hypergamy for long-term mating um or, or sorry they tend to engage in hypergamy but not really for long-term mating right so what they'll do is they'll they'll find a guy that's going to be the uh you know the stay-at-home dad type who's going to fucking make everything happen there but then a lot of the time they'll cheat on this guy right the, you've seen the increase in cheating with a lot of these women uh i actually reacted to that video not that long ago uh but basically what you see is these women like engage in hypergamy, right? So they'll they'll date the stay-at-home dad type dude, but then they'll go and cheat on him all the time. <laughs> so what before. why is what Mr. Like your dad, like why why do you use that word? Uh because he was he was mm -hmm. he was um he never cooked a meal in his house. Mm -hmm. Not when he was with my mom or with my stepmom. Mm -hmm. 
he would say that certain things are for her to do and not for him to do. Anything that was to do with like the cars and fixing or DIY, he would do it. That's not misogyny. That, that. that sounds perfect. That's just weird. That sounds perfect. <laughs> that's, just, <Yep. laughs> that's just like that's how, like again. I live in a very conservative area. That's literally how, like every, I'd say like eighty to ninety percent of the guys where I live are. If it's outside yard work, except for the garden, that's usually seen as like the girls' thing to do. Um, but pretty much anything else, right? When it comes to, like cutting the grass, you know, uh, trimming the hedges, fucking, you know, the, the roof needs reshingled, fucking even stuff inside the house if it beca- if it's like something you have to fix, uh, you know, anything with the cars, um, you know, kids' bikes, whatever it is, right? You, you know, like mechanical work is usually guys' work. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just traditional gender roles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like if I could, if I, I just gotta cook. He's fixing everything. Yeah, he would do all the, like the hard labor stuff, whereas she yeah. would do like all the and that sounds all, all that the sounds good stuff. for women. And I would think that is where exactly I think men are not men anymore. They don't do they like, don't do that. They, yeah, they don't people, do that anymore. Yeah. They, would, they would look at me and tell me, "What do you bring to the table?" Ask them, "Can you fix anything?" I, that's a great point, man. Um, now again, I live in a conser- very like I've said like fucking three times already this video. I live in a very conservative area, so most dudes around here have or do work construction jobs, right? They've, they've worked them before, they currently work them. Um, a lot of people have worked on farms, right? Uh, both my grandparents had farms. My, uh, my mom's parents had a horse farm. My dad's parents did pigs. Um, so, like, a lot of people around here, they, they they know how to do that kind of stuff. But I see this all the time with, like, people I know from the city, from, like, school and shit, where they are fucking clueless when it comes to, like, anything that has to do with, like, construction. They don't know what the tools are. They don't, like, you can literally hand them a fucking drill and they'll be confused as shit. Like, something super simple. Um, They're they're like a 15-year-old, 16-year-old kid on, you know, their first fucking job. They're just absolutely clueless. And these are, like, full-grown men. Um, You know, they don't know anything about cars. Um, They don't know anything. They literally don't know anything about anything. Uh, Like, I'm I'm no mechanic. But I still know enough that I can fix most really basic shit. And I find it, like, really weird that, like, most guys nowadays have no concept of that. Um, construction is probably more my area of expertise. I did construction for fucking 11 years, right from when I was like 16 till in my mid 20s. I did a you know a uh, bunch of concrete stuff. Well, I guess it was more general labor uh, for a concrete company, and then I did asphalt for a while. So like I know, I know how to do construction fairly well. Um, you know pretty much anything construction except for like electricity, but like it's. It's really weird how, like, guys just nowadays know very little shit. And it's <clears> – <throat> another thing is, like, you know, my dad's generation, my grandfather's generation, if you didn't know how to do something yourself, you had a buddy that would do it. And you just give him a case of beer and, it, like, you know, it's like, hey, man, I got to, you know, wi- rewire this new room. You know, come over, give me a hand. I'll buy you a case of beer, some pizza, and we'll fucking get it done for the night. Nowadays, like, you're going to have to call an electrician. I mean, you're about, that's not your buddy because you probably don't fucking know one, right? People – like, most people – especially in the city, just have no concept of this. I find it so weird. I think maybe it's because I grew up in a rural area that most people are still like this, but I, I, I know a, like a lot of people that have no fucking idea how to fix anything from people that I met in school and like go to like to live in the city and shit grew up in the city. It's, it's really fascinating to me how like useless they are. I think part of that's also a generational thing. Um, and I'm kind of in the gray area for this. I think... If you look at kids nowadays, like people in their young 20s and lower, the most guys <clears throat> are going to know how to fix a computer. But, you know, it's almost like car or computers replaced cars, right? So for people older than me, everyone knew how to fix a car. For people younger than me, everyone knows how to fix a computer. And then I'm kind of in the gray area where that was like starting to transition. But I just find it really weird. Do you know how to fix it? Can you fix a toilet? Can you fix a car? Can you change a tire? Do you know mm. how to do that? Most men don't know how to do that. I, I like those some traits. Men, some yeah. men, I like those traits. I like those traits I want, still. I like sticking to part of it. And yeah. I feel like you can still yeah, be a feminist and ones. have... No, you can still be a feminist and have traditional roles. Y- yeah, and but... have a home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you can't. This is one of the things that irritates me. is like the fucking 30 different definitions for feminism. And it's always, you know... Th- like this light right here is literally... I want the benefits of it, but not none of the downsides. Right? Because, uh, because, like, let, let's be real. What are we talking about with feminism? We're talking first wave, second wave, third wave, um, turfs, right? <clears throat> there are a, different, a bunch of different branches. But one thing they all have in common is they think roles should be equal, 
right? That's like one of the basic tenets, like first wave feminism. So no, even under like first wave, which is the least extreme version of feminism, that doesn't work. Yeah, but the, the problem is like you guys aren't young virgins. So you're, that's like demanding traditional outcomes when you're not traditional women. Like, if you were a traditional woman, you'd be a young virgin. Yeah, 100%. And this is one of the things I find funny, right? Um, if it was, like, super taboo, even, like, 50, 60 years ago, I mean, pretty much up until the sexual revolution, right? Uh, and to a certain extent, even, like, 20 or 30 years after that, depending on where you live, if you weren't married, you were expected to be a virgin, Right? And th that was the norm, right? Obviously, Christianity had a much stronger hold on society than it does now. Most most people now aren't Christian, right? Something like 50% of the population self-identifies as, you know, atheistic or agnostic. And then on top of that, you've got, you know, out of the other 50% that actually claims they're Christian, how many of them actually follow the tenets, right? You always see people that, oh, I'm Christian. It's like, no, you're a club thought. Like, just because you wear a fucking a cross necklace and you have some fucking Bible verse tattooed on you doesn't mean you're a Christian. I can't remember the exact uh, quote, but at some point in the Bible, it says something along the lines of, uh, you know, the non-believers who follow my way have a better chance of getting into heaven than uh, those who claim to believe but do not, right? And th there's, there's multiple quotes like that where Jesus is basically talking about how, like, all these people that are fake believers and just attempting to, you know, claim to be Christian to get into heaven they have less chance than, like, an atheist who's just a good person. Um, somebody can post down below the, the original quote because I'm, you know, I haven't been to church since I was, like, fucking 15, 16 years old, but it, I, I find it really weird that these people, like, claim to be traditional, but then they don't follow any of the traditions, right? They just, again, they just want the benefits. They don't want any of the downside. I don't understand. Virgin, virgin. I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, like, like okay, so you're... you're, you're describing things you're saying to the men like you're not traditional men and i i agree but we're not traditional women we're not 22 year 21 year old virgins they, they, they value purity and youth the average age of first marriage in the uk is 31 that that's not pure or youthful how many bodies you got by 31 Oh, okay, loads. Well, it, yeah. And that's what I mean. If you look, at your, mom, if you look at your mum and dad, if you I'm look at your mum and dad. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, 100%. It won't be like that. If, uh, so, so, so right there, she said, I'm a child of God. I'm pure. Now, maybe she actually is, but I think that was more of a joke, right? Which is funny, because that shows how serious she actually takes her religion. It, it, like, you know, if she's if she's actually serious and she actually is a virgin, or was until she was married, I don't know what her relationship status is, good for her. But, you know, if she's just joking about that, that shows how serious she takes her religion, right? The fact that she can mock her own religion, and, and she's perfectly fine with that, and still considers herself religious, if she does. If you look at your mom and dad, how many partners did they have before they got mm. they just got together? I don't think and we're not and, and as well. exactly. But I just think I don't. Oh, my parents have never been with anyone. They got together in like fifteen, sixteen. But again, that's like that is not the norm nowadays. Most people they have their fucking high school sweetheart, then they break up with them when they go to college, then they have their college sweetheart, then they break up with them um, when you know one of them ends up making way more money than the other one. Then they have the, somebody that they actually end up getting with. And then not only that, but they have the whole club phase where, you know, for 10, 15 years, they're fucking banging anything in the club that moves. Yeah, I mean, most people now, I'd be surprised if, I mean, that's why the divorce rate's so low, right? One of the biggest indicators of, of divorce is how many partners the woman has had. It's actually funny because there's no corollary with men, right? Men can sleep with 100 uh, women, get married, and then there's no correlation with divorce. With, with women, as soon as you, it's like something like eight sexual partners. I can't remember the exact number in the study, but if something like eight sexual partners, you have a 95% chance of that relationship ending in divorce, right? It's, yeah. I think that And we're, over, we're overweight getting, too, that's the other thing. Yeah, I don't think men, are, men are getting weak. I don't think men are getting weaker. I just think that society wants them. What Society wants us to believe it. I think it's both. I think society wants. Uh, I think society wants us to believe it, and you know, it's it's kind of like that angry feminist like stereotype is like that is like I, I guess you could say like the oh what's it called? Um, there was a term for this. I think it was Nietzsche that came up with it, but I can't remember the exact term. It's like the society. He has a term for the societal psyche, like the psyche of society. 
and this the psyche of modern day society is like the raging fucking feminist. So I think the the you know the raging feminist psyche of society wants to like shove that down our throats. But I think it's also true, right? I mean, if you look at how useless the average man is today, right? Average guy. Obviously, again, there's always exceptions to this. If you look at how you know weak the average guy is, terrible shape the average guy is. Again, like if, if we're talking about, I think the UK has a little bit lower, which is where this is filmed, a little bit lower obesity stats, but in America, 40% of the population is obese, right? Which means above 30% body fat. Another 40% is overweight, which I think is above 22 or 24% body fat, right? It might even be a little bit lower. It might be 18%. I can't remember the exact numbers, but um, 80% of the population is overweight, right? So dictionary definition, those people are not in shape, right? 80% of the men, right? It, it's, it's absolutely... Like, undeniably, men are getting weaker. Um, but also, like, the, the feminist psyche of society likes to really, you know, almost brag about that. Like, look at how fucking weak and disgusting you are. It's almost like a, a national level or a cultural level shit test. And 80 plus percent of the men in society are failing it. And because nowadays everything's too instant. Like you were saying about, oh, men fix the car, men do this, men do that. Nowadays... Your car breaks down, they make a phone call, it gets fixed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. We, we, as women, we can, we can do that. You know, there are some women like, I can fix my car. I can, I can put a light bulb up. I can, I can uh, put a table from I've IKEA I've got a certificate together. in car maintenance, so, but I'm not doing it. I do the pink jobs yeah. and he does But do you know jobs. what I say? I, mm. I still like, obviously, we are not going to be virgins at this age. Of course not. Yeah. But um, I, I do like the fact that my partner, when something... I love how she says that, but it's, it's not even obvious, right? Like, I mean... It is and it isn't. In modern day society, undeniably, because you have so much social pressure on you, like, you're seen as a fucking loser if you don't lose your virginity by the time you're, like, fucking 12 years old. But, I mean, there's nuns that are, like, fucking 80, 90 years old that are still virgins. <laughs> like, it's not like some fucking, you know, it's not like the hand of God himself is coming down and forcing you to fuck somebody. Something breaks in the house. I love seeing him take, take out his tools and doing that. Yeah. And then, like, oh, baby, I'm, let me make your sandwich while you do that. I like that. I still like that. Yeah. Obviously, it's not going to be... So this is funny because she was just talking about how misogynistic this is, right? And she's like, oh, my father was like that. I love my father. Also, I wish guys would be more like this, right? Again, this is this is the concept, right? It's a shit test. They say they hate this, but they actually love it, right? And one of the best examples I've ever seen of this is I, I know this couple from high school. And the girl when we were in high school was like one of like the biggest like LGBT type advocates. The guy was like the most aggressively fucking homophobic dude I've ever met in my life. To the point where, like, he unironically thought that, like, fucking they should be hung and shit like that. And, but he is, like, a very stereotypically masculine dude, really good athlete, in really good shape, really good-looking dude, like, looks like he could be a male model. He, he has her, like, at the fucking tip of his fingers. She cooks, she cleans, she does everything, right? She's falls right into that role because what they say they want and what they actually want are two different, very different things. I mean, it's, it's on like, I wish I could do a documentary on them. It's like, <laughs> it's the funniest relationship ever to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not the 30 year old virgin. Hell no. But, yeah. <laughs> no. And, and, and I, I agree with you. Like, I think it's attractive, mm -hmm. but it's just like, we're, we're asking for traditional outcomes, but we're not traditional women. Oh no, not at all. We're not. No, well, no. Also, I'd, I'd like not. to point out like the fact that at least she acknowledges it because like honestly I see like this girl's a lot smarter than most of the girls I see on here because at least she acknowledges it most of the girls I see that are on whether it's this podcast or um, Fresh and Fit or whatever other podcast they go on they're, they're like completely clueless they think they're traditional they're literally club hosts who think they're traditional and it's like no you're not like why are you even pretending but like this girl's actually got a fucking head on her shoulders you know, she realizes, I'm not a traditional woman. Um, so, good on her, because she's literally, the f I think, the first one I've seen on any of these podcasts who actually accepts that she's not traditional. I think Paul pointed out as well that you used the word misogyny, which is a negative word, and I think what you explained was your dad just having roles in the house and relationship. And I think I think that's a pertinent thing to notice, that, that, that misogyny is like a, a, a disdain for women. Yeah. Well. Don't forget there's one of those... Um, Key words. The one they when there was new words that they use. The I'm writing them down. I've the been writing them down. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hang on a minute. All these all these <laughs> words are keep on coming That's out and everybody's using it. Yeah. 
Yeah, that guy, that guy actually makes a great point, right? Misogyny is being, like, disdainful of women, right? Like, you, you hate them, you're disgusted by them, you're aggressive towards them, right? Just because your dad and your mom had traditional gender roles doesn't mean your dad was misogynistic. Wouldn't that also mean that your mom is misandristic, right? But it's one of those, like, fucking, I don't even know what you call it, like a a gotcha word almost, right, that you can just throw at people. I saw this again on the Pierce Morgan interview with uh, Andrew Tate, where, you know, he, Andrew, you know, said something that, like, everyone agrees with, right? It's just basic fucking reality that, you know, women that are 18 uh, are generally more attractive than women who are 25, who are generally more attractive than women who are 30, who are generally more attractive than women who are 35, you know, etc. And Pierce is like, isn't that misogynistic? It's like, no, Pierce, I mean, like, it's, it's maybe you could argue it's ageist. I mean, it undeniably is ageist, but, like, it, it's a, it's a, statement of fact right and are there exceptions and that was the really annoying thing with that debate was pierce is like well I, I know this one girl and she's like 35 and she's really good looking it's like there's always exceptions jennifer anderson's like fucking 50 she's still hot as shit right i mean if you take really good care of yourself you got really lucky on the genetic lottery you know a combination of different factors you're gonna still be smoking hot but like on average you know men rate women 18 to 25 is the most attractive once they get older than that, right, the fertility starts to go away, and that's what, that's what a lot of beauty is, right? It's just a, a proxy for fertility. Men can look at it and see, like, oh, she's probably still fertile. I can probably have offspring with her. It's, it's you know, it's just subconscious, unconscious thought for, you know, mating, essentially. But anyway, let's continue. Say something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is it? I'm going to throw a cataract. <laughs> is it a cataract or whatever it is they're going to throw at you? Oh, fuck. I, I heard No, I agree. You know I, mean? I agree when you say the word misogyny is not, it's not good. But the reason why I say it is because he went, he went overboard. Like, one time we were in a restaurant. Mm. I, went, I went to Colombia back on holiday and he was like, oh, let's go have a, a meal in a restaurant. And, um, and we were at the restaurant and the way, the way he was treating the waiter was like, bring me this. Uh, why are you not bringing me this? And I was like, he I, don't, I don't know if that's misogyny. That's just being a dickhead, right? Like, treat the waitstaff nice. They're probably going to spit in your food if you don't. But, yeah, I wouldn't call that misogyny. I mean, unless it was exclusively the women. But, I mean, most places have exclusively women waitstaff. Um, except there's this one casino that's not too far from me. And it's all these rich older ladies that go there. So, almost all the waitstaff is, like, young guys. Because the casino realizes that, like, all these, you know, co fucking... Oh, I don't even know if you can call them cougars. They're so fucking old. They're, like, these 50, 60, 70-year-old fucking rich white ladies. And uh, my cousin actually used to work here. And he would often get, like, tips. Like, $1,000 tips from these girls. Because, the, like, they're, they're, like, these old fucking rich white ladies whose husbands make, like, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars a year. And they just go fucking hang out at the casino and, like, fucking eat all the food and, you know, gamble away all day and... It was a great gig for him. That dude made so much money from just from tips. But yeah, most wait staff at most places is women, right? I mean, it's usually young, attractive girls, girls in late teens, early to mid twenties, right? To to him, he was he was the alpha male wherever he was or wherever he went, and because he had businesses and and good status or whatever, he yeah. he carried himself like that, and that's why I say he was so misogynistic that. That, I don't agree with not, it. I don't like. Misogyny. You might I think that, but he, he, might, he might just think to himself, you know what? I'm paying for a service, and I want the service right. Exactly. Yeah, guys, but guys. he did it in the like the wrong way. Mm -hmm. He wasn't. I mean, but, but yeah, like I, I agree. Your dad's probably kind of an asshole for that, but that's not misogyny, right? I mean, that just makes him a dick to the wait staff. I mean, he could he could nice... be he could be rude. Yeah. Like, rude what is what is misogynistic rude. to you? Okay, my understanding is some uh, masculine in its. Overbearing masculine. Overbearing. No, that that's what she actually thinks, though. Like, yeah. I, th I think mm -hmm. people, people, modern feminists, that's what they actually think. They think misogyny is just being a man. It's masculinity. Mm -hmm. That they think that's the problem. Um, but it's but yeah, it's not. It's misogyny is hating women, right? It's the difference between being an asshole and hating women. Now there may be some overlap, but like one does not automatically mean the other, right? You could be an asshole and love girls. You could be an asshole and hate girls. But, like, it seems like her dad is just a dick to the waiters, right? That doesn't mean he's a misogynist. A disdain for women. So misogyny is kind of like judging someone purely based on their gender in kind of an oppressive way. I think, like, saying things like, you, you can't... It's the this. hatred mm -hmm. of women. Yeah. yeah, but the action of misogyny mm -hmm. is, is, is kind of mm -hmm. like, you can't, you can't have this job because you're a woman. Yeah. You know, X, Y, Z, that's how it, you know, it, it shows itself. It's not being rude to a waiter or saying, uh, my wife, she cooks, I pay for the bills. That's not misogyny. That's just being, you know, a man who believes in roles. Maybe overbearing at times, but do you know what I was misogyny. just thinking? Her dad sounds like a older version of Andrew Tate. 
Yeah, a hundred percent. That's everyone. That's, 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 that's what I'm trying that's to say. Everyone's dad. But it's not misogyny, is it? Yeah, <laughs> He's just an alpha male. He he didn't have a big mouth like Tate does, but he was he was very in his actions. Very. That's the woman's <laughs> role, and this is the man's role, and there ain't no in between. And that's fair enough. You have a right to define roles in your relationship. It's consensual, right? If 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 I say you have to do this and I do this, but that's you know, fair enough. Yeah, but you know something, right? Even though she looks in it as if it's something negative. It worked for her parents. And I mean, to a certain extent, right? She, uh, I mean, I guess that relationship worked for them, but the, didn't she say they got divorced? And then on top of that, also, I mean, she ended up being a club thought, so. Yeah, but I, I think that probably has more to do with other stuff. And it worked for them. And notice they, they like aspects of it. So no one complains no, that, like, like you know, my dad was paying too much of the bills and taking care of too much stuff and really kind of protect us too much. It's only, like, random small things, then it's, like, misogyny. And, you know, the, the, the thing is, the older they get, the more they realize, you know what, I, I want to be like my parents. They, they didn't have it so bad. Because the older you get, you're going to realize that all of these roles that they had... It works. It works. Mm -hmm. And everybody's going to all traditional, and they're looking at their parents and thinking, nah, they were too traditional. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, look at the longevity of your parents' relationship compared to the longevity of the relationships now where people decide they want to mix modern with traditional, which don't work. Not only that, but like most, I mean, I guess it depends on how old you are and how old your parents are. But like most people's parents weren't as traditional as they think, right? Um, I, again, it depends on how old you are and how old your parents are. But like a lot of people's parents nowadays, like my parents got together in the 90s, or I guess technically the late 80s. Um, you know, like we're, we're now at the point where it's 2022. There's 20 year olds out here who were born in the 2000s, right? Their parents were teenagers in like the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, you know, there, there's people that, like it's kind of it's kind of funny because there are people who, you know, their parents' traditional relationship was not traditional at all. Like it was more traditional than anything you see today, right? Because they weren't in a fucking polygamous or po polyamorous like five fucking fruple or whatever um but yeah like i mean it's definitely not like the traditionalism of like the fucking 50s and 60s right when you have the leave it to beaver type fucking society like for most people that's their grandparents or even their great grandparents like nowadays at least like for me if, if i want to go back to like the 60s like that was my great grandparents uh, like that what my my grandparents grew up in like the hippie era my parents grew up in, like, the fucking, you know, late, the 70s, 80s, and into the early 90s. So, it's, yeah, it's just, mo most people's parents nowadays weren't even traditional. I think that's half the reason why. It, it's society's, like, getting further and further away from that point to the point where nowadays, if, if you're 20 years old, it's probably been two or three generations since there was a traditional relationship in your fucking bloodline. Like, a truly traditional relationship. For most people, I mean, my parents were, st like, again, they, I live in a really conservative area, so my parents were still really traditional. My grandparents definitely were, um, both sets, but, like, that's not the norm. Like, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're my age and you live in a city, you probably have a fucking mom, a dad, a stepmom, a stepdad. Uh, you, pr you might even have a, a fucking, like, eight sets of grandparents because they, they all have, like, you know, stepwives and stephusbands and shit, or, I mean second wives, second husbands, you know, your step-grandmother or whatever. Um, like, if you live in, yeah, it's, if you live in a city, it's probably, like, it's been two, three, maybe four generations since there's been a f fucking traditional relationship. I think that's why it's so weird to so many people nowadays. Never Auntie, works, yeah. Auntie, would you describe yourself as a modern woman? No. Would you, how would you describe yourself? Because you, you've said you're not traditional. So. I, would, I would say I'm a traditionalist. Okay, what does that mean? Auntie's been fucking watching the trad cats online. <laughs> Just watching Nick Fuentes. <laughs> uh, that would actually be funny. I would love to see an interaction between her and Nick Fuentes. That'd be like the funniest fucking thing ever. I'm not a virgin. Okay. And I'm having loads of sex. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could still be traditional and not be a virgin. It's just you have to be with the guy that you married, right? I mean, that's pretty obvious. I mean, obviously, if, if traditional people didn't have sex, there'd be nobody here today. 
And it's just that people wait until marriage and then they only have sex with the fucking person they were married to. There was no swinging. There was no throuples. There was no premarital sex. There was no extramarital sex. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I still know my place, but I would say that if I was a virgin and I was the same person and I was married, I'm traditional. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm just an old bird with traditional values. <laughs> no, I'm just an old bird with traditional values. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like over a certain age, modern women cannot have traditional outcomes anymore? Um, I think it becomes incre like increasingly more difficult. I mean, t technically, if you, again, if you're still like a, you know, if you're a woman who happened to still be a virgin somehow at like 30, 35 years old, um... It's, one, it's going to be difficult because it's going to be hard to have kids, right? The older you get for a woman, the more difficult it becomes. Um, but, I mean, technically you can still get into that traditional relationship, right? It, it's just, it's going to become more difficult. However, if, if you're a club thought, then no. That's that's off the table, right? Like, immediately. Immediately it's off the table. But yeah, if you're somehow like a 30-year-old female virgin, which, I mean, they do exist, they're rare, but like, they're out there um then yeah i mean why not right if you you're you're, you're it's, it's gonna get increasingly more difficult as you get older but it's definitely possible i had the same conversation today with him indoors and he just he it was just like they get to this age after being so modern and they hit like the 35s and they think you know what it's not working for me i want to be traditional but then the men that are out there that are want traditional, they don't want them. Because the women are coming with these modern values, trying to be traditional, and you know what? You either got it or you ain't, and you can't mix the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. That's the thing a lot of women don't seem to understand. Is they're like, oh, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to club it up until I'm 30, 35, then I'll settle down and find a guy. It's like, maybe if you're, like, incredibly fucking hot, you can pull that off. Like, if you're, like, an absolute dime piece. And I think that's the problem is, like, they look up to girls that did that because they were absolute fucking dimes. But the reality is most of you, like, most humans in general are, like, fives, right? That's the average human. So if you're a five and you're a 30, 30 to 35-year-old five, you've been a club thought your entire life, and now all of a sudden you want to date some 40-year-old traditional dude, he's not going to go for you because if he's got his shit together and he's a traditional man... He could easily marry a fucking 20, 21 year old, 22 year old, right? And, and we've seen, and there's, there's been studies on this too, where, like, again, men rate women the most attractive when they're in their, like, you know, 18 to 25 ish. Women may rate men most attractive when they're, like, 35 to their early 40s, right? So, again, if, if a guy's in his early 40s and he's really got his shit together and he's making a fuck ton of money and he's still in good shape and, you know, he's the best looking he's ever going to be according to women, right? He's at his peak sexual value. He can go and get a girl that's 20, 21, 22, no fucking problem, right? So why why would he deal with you and all your baggage when if he want, especially when he wants a traditional relationship, he can go get that from a young girl who actually, you know, values that. You cannot mix the two. And women are out there, they're too busy trying to be modern but traditional. But no, they're not even trying to be like a normal woman with traditional values. They want to be modern and traditional and they're going to clash. Okay. They're gonna... Yeah, everyone wants the benefits of both and the downsides of none, right? So they want the guy that's going to pay for everything and protect them and, you know, be the man of the house. But also they don't want to cook. They don't want to clean. Some of them don't even want kids. They don't want to be, you know virgins a lot of them they want to be like literal fucking club thoughts where they've got like a hundred bodies uh you know they they want all the benefits but none of the downsides as they see them right none, none of the responsibility is probably a better word for it all the benefits none of the responsibility because the two can't work together no matter what they say it can't work i'm telling you it cannot work you cannot be modern and traditional at the same time. Modern is all about, look it up in the dictionary. Modern is all about me, 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 me. Traditional is about us, the village, raising everybody together. So you can't turn around and say,
Yeah, that's a huge factor, right? When it comes to like traditional relationships, it's all about the kids. And I think that's one thing that people really miss the boat on nowadays. And I think a big part of that has to do with hormonal birth control is, you know, whether, you know, again, whether you look at this from like a traditional religious perspective or an evolutionary perspective, the entire point of a relationship is to have offspring. But because we have modern hormonal birth control, so many people look at relationships as like, oh, I just want to be happy. It's like, that's not what a relationship's about. A relationship's about having kids making a great life for those kids, raising those kids. But so many people, they're like so short-sighted when it comes to this shit because of, you know, the ability to just have sex with no repercussions. Whereas before there was mass, like, I mean, before if you had sex up until like the 60s, there was a huge chance you were going to have a kid, right? Nowadays it's, it's much lower, but I mean, bruh, like, yeah. People, people just don't understand the point of relationships anymore. It feels like a big problem. Because, again, whether, you, whether you're looking at it from, like, an evolutionary perspective, like a scientific evolutionary perspective, or from, like, a traditional religious perspective, that is the point of relationship is to, you know, have children, create the next generation, and then raise them. Say, oh, I'm going to be modern. It's all about me, and I'm going to do traditional because it does not work. It's impossible. You're fooling yourself if you think you could be modern with traditional values. If I turned around and I said, oh, I'm a traditionalist and I'm going to be modern, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to get my nails done, I'm going to wear a miniskirt, I'm going to get my hair done, I'm going to get makeup on my... They're thinking, like, you're kidding yourself. Look at her, old woman. Do you know what I mean? Or mutton dressed as lamb. They not <laughs> Mutton dressed as lamb. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh that is a great line i've never heard that before that is fucking i gotta use that that is beautiful from a traditional old person like me trying to be modern so why do they think it's gonna work the other way around it don't yeah how mm. how do you feel like we can tr return do you do you think there is any returning to traditionalism for modern women for, so for modern women, no. Um, I think uh, the big thing is it has to be like the next generation. Obviously, there's people nowadays that do live that life. I know a lot of people I went to high school with. Again, I live in a very conservative area, a very Christian area. A lot of people I went to high school with still live that life. For for them, they, they have it. For the next generation of their kids, they probably have it. I think the big factor is a lot of people that are, you know, modern need to wake the fuck up uh, and realize that, like, they have to either... You know, a lot of them are going to have to bite the bullet themselves, which I think, unfortunately, a lot of them aren't going to want to do, right? And it's going to be very difficult to do. You're going to have to have a lot of these club thoughts and marry the, like, the most traditional guy they can possibly find. And you're going to have a lot of these dudes that are going to have to, you know, deal with a girl with some fucking level of club thoughtery when a lot of them just want to go MGTOW and not have to deal with that. And I just don't think that's going to happen. But I think the, 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 the thing is we have to set the example for the next generation and try and, you know, essentially fix what's happened. But I just don't see that happening. I think, again, I've, I've read this book multiple times, J.D. Unwin's Sex and Culture. 1930s, he wrote this book comparing something like 271 or 272 different cultures um, and nations over history. And this is just part of the inevitable decline of cultures. A lot of it was sped up because of hormonal birth control. Um, but this is actually something a stage societies go through in their decay phase all the time. I think we're just in our decay phase will collapse, probably be conquered by some other people's, um, they'll fix it and then they'll carry on. That's how it goes. Like, is there any way they can do it? No, forget about modern women. I, I want to start my grandchildren's age and the children because there's no hope for them. The other 100% true. You got to go with your, well, for her, I guess it would be her grandchildren, but you know, you got to start with like, it's got to be the kids because people our age are too old, right? There are, most of them are already stuck in their ways. Most women my age, if you, if, if they're not traditional already, you try to tell them this shit, they're just going to get fucking mad at you. They're, they're not even, they're not even going to listen to you. They're going to either completely blank out and just ignore you and sit there and like roll their fucking eyes while they ignore everything you say, or they're just going to scream at you, right? Like it just depends on like what kind of girl it is. Um, but they're probably not going to listen to you unless they're already traditional. The thing I can do yeah. is all the as many of you know, I yeah, honestly, a great video. I think that's one of the most important topics we have, uh, when it comes to modern society, I think a lot of issues are downstream from that, right? Uh, you always hear, I, I see conservatives talk about this all the time. The family is the most important thing and everything is downstream from the family. And it's true, but they need to go one step further back and look, why is the family falling apart? And I think the big problem with them is they always look at, uh, you know, different policies, like when it comes to welfare and stuff. They're like, this is why, this is why. And I think, no, it's the, the lax views on sex and the... Uh, 
the disregard and disgust we have for traditionalism and traditional relationships that I think is a bigger contributing factor than, you know, whether or not you can get mother's allowance, right? Um, but anyway, let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.